call to service for the state of Alabama. This is an integral part of the U.S. Capitol. The legacy he leaves behind. Do you think it's getting more difficult to get things done? It's gotten tough. Reaching across party lines. I think relationships are important. And how his work impacted us all. You cannot go anywhere in the state without seeing something that is Richard Shelby's legacy. He thought things were possible that others um, did not. In his first sit-down interview with a Birmingham television station in six years, rare access and look into the life of Alabama's longest serving U.S. Senator. This is Senator Richard Shelby, The Journey Home. Welcome to Washington, D.C. I'm Ian Wrights. This is a place that U.S. Senator Richard Shelby has called his home away from home for 44 years, spending many days and nights inside the U.S. Capitol behind me. But come January, he'll transition from public servant to private citizen and head full time to Tuscaloosa. Today, we take a look at his career, how he's approached his work and the projects he steered back to his state. Plus, we hear from those who've served beside him over the years and how they think he'll be remembered. But first, a rare look at the stop Senator Shelby makes each and every day in the nation's capital. The desk is was Lyndon Johnson's. It belongs to the Senate. It's got his initial in it. You want to go through some of our yes, office? Yes, please. This is the hall. This is the three, two Senate offices. Senator McConnell's, it was Kennedy's for. Then mine, then the Rules Committee. Come on in here. Come in here. You can see the Washington Monument. Just pull over here if you can, and the view. If you just look to the right here, and you step out and you see that, and you say, well, God, this is an integral part of the U.S. Capitol. This is, this is the seat of government and you, you're playing a small part of it, knowing it's fleeting. You wonder who's walked these halls, who's, who was president, who became president and came out of the Senate, who ran for president. A lot of people ran for president. Sure. This is the big caucus room. They named it for the Kennedy brothers. A lot of receptions here. A lot. This is where MacArthur's hearings were. You gotta remember, this, this was built in 1909 before real machine tools. Come on this way. This is where we're going to the train and we'll ride the train to the Capitol. If we were voting, we would have, the police would stop everybody here uh, from, other than the members from because of the time frame to vote. So probably thousands of times? Yeah, I would say over 36 years I've ridden this. Oh, yeah. And I've walked it a lot. So we're in the Capitol. Okay. We're going to ride the train up, I mean the escalator up. We are underneath the original capital. We're going to go up. This is the first floor of the U.S. Capitol, the Senate side. Okay. And uh, the Senate chamber is right above. Straight ahead is the Appropriations Committee. Okay. Right over. Spent a lot of time there over the years. When I was chairman, it's like here. Yeah. See, okay. I'm right here. So this is your seat? Oh, yeah. I'm the top Republican. You're standing in by the Senate. You're looking right there is the U.S. Supreme Court. And right over there is the Russell Senate Office Building. Down the street is the White House and the Washington Monument. And right on across walking distance is the Lincoln Memorial. And it's all part of America. The Supreme Court, just about all the marble inside the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court's huge now. It's all from Alabama. A lot has changed since the senator first came to Washington back in the 1970s, including how you get things done here on Capitol Hill. It's one of the topics we talked about when we sat down inside his hideaway or Capitol office inside the original Capitol building. So it's historic in nature where we're sitting right now. This is Senator Richard Shelby's hideaway, one of the oldest offices in the original Capitol. Beginning in the early 1800s, it was used by the Supreme Court before justices eventually moved to their own building. For the senator's last two terms, it's been his place to work. You've got some tranquility here. You've got a place where you can study, you can be by yourself. You can, but you're right in the Capitol. You're right just a few feet from the Senate floor. The Senate floor, a place Senator Richard Shelby has spent countless days and nights. He was on the floor in session on January 6th, a day he describes as a very dark day for our country. Adding in a tweet sent that afternoon from the Capitol, our founding fathers warned against mob rule. Law and order must be established and maintained. The staff, they're all over there working when all hell broke loose. They escorted us through the tunnel to the building. We were there nine to ten hours. The, the, 
Capitol Police, FBI told them they could not leave this building. Wow. Dangerous. The senator has not only witnessed history, but shifts in the ways of Washington. What's changed about how you get things done in the Senate? Well, the Senate changed because America's changed. Uh, America's evolved a lot. The senator pointing to members of both parties who shaped his early Senate days and showed him the importance of bipartisan work for our nation. We're too polarized today, but we're polarized in the country. You know, we have a 50-50 uh, Senate right now and everything is this and that. And uh, I think we, we ought to think more and more about putting the nation first, not the party, but not the Republicans, not the Democrats, but the issues, the, the principles that built this country sustains this country. And I've tried to do some of that. Now, don't get me wrong, I also represent our caucus too. How do you do that? I mean, how, how do you make that happen given kind of the nature of where, where politics is today? Well, that's an excellent question you just asked because you get that because we're dealing with the human condition, which is all of us. We're dealing with, I'm dealing with people on the other side of the aisle that we don't vote together on most things, or we don't agree on most things, but some of us are friends. That brings us to the topic of how political parties have changed over the years, specifically Senator Shelby's party, the GOP. With the midterms now in the rearview mirror, all eyes are on the race for the White House in 2024. It's one of the topics we dove into with Senator Shelby, including the future of the Republican Party. When Senator Richard Shelby and I visited before the midterms, we talked about former President Donald Trump and the tension between Mr. Trump and some within his own party. Keep in mind, we taped this conversation before the former president announced another bid for the White House. He's unique. He's got a lot of good ideas. I've supported him a lot. Uh, I've met, used to meet with him at the White House a lot and so forth. Uh, but he also uh, lights a fire under himself sometimes. I guess we all do. And uh, we're our best friend and worst enemy, and that's true of all of us. But Trump is a force in, in the country, He's still a force, and uh, he could be a bigger force, we don't know. We'd have to see it play out. There's a lot of players out there, and politics is fluid, both Democrat and Republican. Uh, it's not written in stone. Do you think he'll be the nominee in 2024? I think right now that that's what the trend would show, but you never know. It's a long time. Uh, I, if you, I don't know what the odds are, and I don't bet on anything. I'd lose, but but I'd say if you were betting, you'd have to bet money on that he would be probably be the nominee, unless somebody takes it away from you. And sometimes somebody takes it away. Would you support him if he was the nominee? Well, I'm going to support the nominee. There was one fairly recent time when the senator did not support his party's nominee. In the 2017 special Senate election between GOP nominee Roy Moore and Democrat Doug Jones, the senator distanced himself from Moore after allegations of sexual assault surfaced for the Republican nominee, allegations that Moore denied. I uh, couldn't vote for Roy Moore. I didn't vote for Roy Moore, but I wrote in a distinguished Republican name and I, I think a lot of people could do that. Will they do it? I'm not sure. The woman who replaces Senator Richard Shelby knows him well. And Katie Britt served as his deputy press secretary, then his press secretary, worked on his 2016 re-election campaign, and served as his chief of staff. In January, she'll take his seat in the U.S. Senate. We caught up with Senator-elect Britt to talk about her former boss and his legacy. And to the man, Senator Richard Shelby and his wonderful wife, Dr. Annette Shelby. <laughs> whose seat I will fill, but whose shoes will likely never fit. Who gave me a shot 20 years ago. Who was Alabama's greatest statesman. Senator-elect Katie Britt thanking her former boss and soon-to-be predecessor in the U.S. Senate during her victory speech. A few weeks later, we sat down to talk more about Senator Shelby's legacy. He thought things were possible that others um, did not. Senator-elect Britt was quick to point to his track record of getting projects back to Alabama. He was all about results, and he was about quietly doing what he needed to do um, to protect our nation and to put Alabama and Alabamians in the very best place possible each and every day as a result of his service. As for how history will remember the senator. He has had the opportunity um, to lead challenging conversations for our nation. He has had the opportunity to be that visionary, to stay 
how can this state be better as a result of my service? And you've seen him do that day in and day out. And there is no doubt in my mind that he is Alabama's greatest statesman and that that's how he will be remembered. When Senator Richard Shelby finishes up his time in Washington, he'll have spent 44 years in Congress, half of his life. We caught up with a few other lawmakers who've worked here beside him over the years to get their insight into his time in the nation's capital. I think people don't really fully appreciate the economy that Alabama has, has been so uh, dependent and built on the platform that Richard Shelby um, laid out for the state over his many years uh, in the Senate. But former Senator Doug Jones tells me projects are just part of that legacy and points to how Richard Shelby has carried himself over the years in Washington. You've never seen Richard Shelby be an absolute bomb thrower partisan uh, about things. He votes. He has a conscience. He's a conservative. He has been that way even when he was a Democrat. But the fact of the matter is he is friendly. He is he makes friends with folks. He listens to people and he's the kind of uh, politician. He's the kind of public servant uh, that I think people need to uh, emulate a little bit more of. The soon to be most senior lawmaker in Alabama's delegation, Congressman Robert Adderholt, says Richard Shelby always made sure Alabama was included when federal money was in play especially the state's universities. His home became part of the 4th Congressional District back about 10 years ago, and so I've had the privilege for him to be my senator, and I've been his congressman, and to work with him on that. But he has been, I serve on the Preparations Committee on the House side, and that has given us such opportunity to work together on a lot of projects as well. And like I said, I think he will be very missed for the state of Alabama, and he will be very missed by his colleagues in Washington, D.C. as well. Those colleagues include Representative Terry Sewell, who has a unique tie to the senator. Having interned for him when he was a Democrat um, was truly a transformational opportunity for me. I interned for him not one summer, but three summers. Congresswoman Sewell called him a guiding force in Alabama and says she'll miss him not only as a senator, but also as a friend. What has been uh, the lasting legacy for me is that he's always been there as a person that I could talk to. We may not agree on, uh, you know, 80% of the policy stuff, but the 20% that we can work together on, which is almost always about economic uh, opportunities in the Black Belt um, in Alabama, and um, I'm going to miss it. And Senator Tommy Tuberville tells me that since he made the move to Washington in early 2021, he has learned a lot from Senator Shelby. What he says goes now. I mean, if he tells you something, you can, you can take it to the bank. And so he's built that reputation of trust. I've traveled with him just learning the language. This is a new language going to Washington, D.C. And he knows all the shortcuts. He knows why and how to do things, uh, do it the proper way, get things done. He is, he's been a senator that's gotten the ball over the goal line. Up next, celebrations for some of Alabama's finest athletes. A different kind of history that Senator Shelby has witnessed right here at the White House. Welcome back to Washington, D.C. I'm Ian Wrights. U.S. Senator Richard Shelby and his wife have been married for 62 years. And once he's done with his final term here in the U.S. Senate, they'll be able to spend more time in Tuscaloosa, a place they have always considered home. And instead of traveling for work, they'll be able to do so for fun. That is the Cannon office building. That's the house, one of the house office buildings. 44 years later, Senator Richard Shelby's walks outside the Capitol are winding down. Try to enjoy uh, what's left for me down there, but I feel good today. I hope I will tomorrow, and i uh, looking forward to being back full time in Alabama. The senator and his wife, Dr. Annette Shelby, a retired academic at both UA and Georgetown, have been commuting back and forth for years. She played a big role. I met her when she was a, uh, a junior in college, a 19-year-old Phi Beta Kappa, uh, honors, top honors everywhere, and she's uh, She's played an integral role uh, in, my, in my life. The senator tells me he may do some fishing, some bird hunting, or a little travel. My wife and I like to travel on our own, and I guess I have to find out where she wants to go. Huh? We know living in Alabama means celebrating championship football teams. But when you represent Alabama in the U.S. Senate, it means celebrating with the players and coaches right here at the White House. A great pleasure to welcome the Alabama Crimson Tide to the White House. Again, roll tide. I guess for a lot of folks, it's welcome back. But it's certainly uh, one of the most special times that we've had uh, to come here and share this with you. And it's my great honor to welcome the college 
football national champions. During Richard Shelby's time in the Senate, the Alabama Crimson Tide have won seven national championships. That number goes even higher if you count his time in the House. The wins have given Alabama's longest serving senator and UA alum a front row seat to several White House receptions. When you're number one in the nation, and I remember since uh, Gene Stallings was coach, and I was down at the White House. I've been there with Saban a number of times. And he's just proud of the team and proud of what you did. And in 2010, Auburn University won the national championship and was also celebrated at the White House. I want to start by recognizing some very proud members of Congress uh, who are here today. Members of Congress, delegation, where are you? Here you go, all the, all the Alabama crew right here. Shelby Sessions, so They are very proud. All they do is just talk about y'all. You know. There's much more ahead with retiring U.S. Senator Richard Shelby, including this. He will call with an idea and he'll be so excited about it. Here's somebody who's been uh, in the Senate for all these years, uh, nearing the end of his career, but he's still excited about a new idea that he wants to bring to our system. A closer look at how universities and even the health care you receive in Birmingham has been impacted by the senator's work in Washington. The day you're sworn in, you're probably the 99th or 100th senator in seniority, and, and you're glad to be in the Senate, uh, proud to be there, but you've got to earn your way in the Senate, earn the respect to your peers. Nearly 36 years later, Richard Shelby is the chamber's fourth most senior member, but the state's longest serving senator has a roughly 60 year career that started before politics against the backdrop of the civil rights movement. It's been like really a tracer bullet through major issues, not only of Alabama history, but American history. After law school, Richard Shelby was a Tuscaloosa City prosecutor and jumped into politics in 1970, winning a seat in the Alabama State Senate. Richard Shelby will provide that leadership. He was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1978, serving Alabama's 7th Congressional District. In 1986, he won his first term in the U.S. Senate narrowly defeating the incumbent. When I first came to the Senate, uh, I was a Democrat. I grew up as a Democrat in the South. We didn't know any Republicans. But after the 1994 midterms, when the GOP won control of both the House and Senate under the Clinton administration, Senator Shelby switched parties. It was part of a change that was taking place all across the South. Ed Bridges, Director Emeritus of the Alabama Department of Archives and History, says over the decades, regardless of title or party affiliation, the senator played a uniquely unifying role. In his daily work, year after year, he has quietly worked with black and white Alabamians in, in a quiet, steady, persistent way to bring people together and to make Alabama a better state. I think that's certainly something to his, his great credit. Senator Shelby served six terms in the Senate and chaired four committees, intelligence, banking, housing, and urban affairs, and rules and administration. In 2018, he began chairing the powerful Senate Appropriations Committee, responsible for making big decisions about how federal funds are allocated. And over the years, the senator worked to get billions back home. From expanding and deepening the portomobile to increasing the FBI's presence in North Alabama at Redstone Arsenal, Senator Shelby tells me his focus has remained on opportunities for the state and the thousands of jobs that follow. I have tried to help Alabama by not giving them things, but to create conditions for them to do well. Education, science and engineering. Another big focus, university research. He has believed from the beginning the, uh, that the you know, success of higher education helps the state. UA System Chancellor Finna St. John points to UAB and UAB's health system as two key examples. Well, the academic medical center that we have here in Birmingham at UAB is a crown jewel of the state. Uh, our, our citizens have access to the most advanced health care in the world. Uh, research is cutting edge, uh, world class is going on right here at, at UAB. 
Uh, that couldn't happen without the resources that Senator Shelby has helped provide over the years. And even during his final months in office, the senator has been laser focused on a final appropriations bill, working to secure an additional $76 million for a new biomedical research facility at UAB. New buildings and new programs filled with students, who the chancellor hopes also bring change to Alabama. And hopefully they'll go back and change their communities and help advance our state. But historian Bridges says it may take years, if not decades, before we fully understand the impact. All of these things that Senator Shelby has helped seed and make possible have a potential, I think, of a transformative effect in Alabama over the next 10, 15, 20, 50 years from now. All of the papers and records that went into his years of work will eventually be housed at the University of Alabama, where students will be able to learn from his time in Washington. Up next, Senator Richard Shelby's final thoughts to Alabamians before he leaves Washington. I'm a son of Alabama, I wanna go home. As Senator Shelby and I finished up our time together, we discussed how he'll be remembered. The projects are just part of it. It's other things that you've done or stood for and uh, substance that matter, but that'll be up to historians to decide what's important and what's not. It's not for me. On our walk toward his Senate office, I asked for his final thoughts to voters. I'd say thank you for electing me to office. It's been a great run, a great opportunity. I've tried to work hard, and do the right thing for the nation first. We're part of that nation. That's what I would say. And that's where we'll leave it today. If you missed parts of our interview with Senator Richard Shelby, we had rare access, giving us a glimpse into his life in Washington. You can watch that right now on the WVTM 13 app. And thanks for joining us for this look back at the career of Alabama's longest serving senator as he wraps up his sixth and final term in Washington and heads home to Tuscaloosa. In the nation's capital, I'm Ian Wrights.